The Legacy and Leadership of Indigenous Women by Mirna Wabisabi. The Leadership of Indigenous Women. Indigenous peoples are often seen as protectors of the forest when they lift up the mirror to Western civilization, revealing how capitalism and industrialization led to climate change. But if we look beyond ourselves, we can see that their livelihoods have been at stake much before it became clear to us that ours is as well. Rapacious hunting and fishing is making land scarce, which is unsustainable for us and devastating for them. This devastation has led indigenous women to fight to reclaim land, not just the right to use whatever is left of the land's resources after governments privatize and industries extract, and they fight at any cost. It's clear now as much as ever, after the coup, Lula's imprisonment, attempts to privatize Latin America's largest electricity company, and consequently Brazil's largest river, the San Francisco River, that the government is not an ally. Quote, politicians don't represent us. End quote. They and the military are not to be believed, because it's clear that what they say they will do to help doesn't happen. They're only after votes. Many politicians only show up to collect information, and even family members sometimes turn people in intentionally or unintentionally. The fight for territory doesn't need the government. The auto-demarcation of land shows the political strength of the movement, and most importantly, the spiritual strength of the people. Open quotes. If you don't feel capable of speaking about yourself, how can you speak for the other? If we don't speak, we won't be heard. The abuse of the woman needs to be spoken by the woman. Otherwise, there won't be any change. That's why we assume the responsibility of militancy without weekends or holidays. End quote. Husbands also can't represent their wives. They must represent themselves, because if they don't speak up, they're not heard. There is power in denunciation. Without it, there are no rights. On the other hand, with denunciation comes persecution. Coming out of invisibility means a whole new set of threats. Open quotes. Whites want to keep getting richer, so they kill us. End quote. Which is why massacres happen with impunity. If the cops or the military don't remove tribes from privatized land, landlords will buy the bullet. And if they don't kill, they burn the homes and all the things. Open quotes. To lead requires courage. Because we're hunting down like animals. End quote. The Guarani Kaiwa territory in Mato Grosso do Sul is home to tribes that have recently enjoyed egregious acts of violence. Flavia, a 21-year-old indigenous leader, has witnessed a type of police brutality unimaginable to most people. The militarized police force invaded her community where she lives with her six-year-old son, shooting, leaving many injured and one dead. She says with tears in her eyes that her son is no longer afraid of guns and that for generations natives grew up in fear without knowing that what they endure is oppression. Another indigenous woman adds, open quotes, I had to overcome the fear of death, and now I'm prepared to die because I know I'll die doing something worthwhile, end quote. The transgenerational trauma, together with the violence that is still happening today, leads to complex existential obstacles. Among native youth in particular, demoralization leads to high suicide rates. Some government programs arrange for psychologists to go to the communities, but according to Nadia Kawa, they are not the solution. They will not help people because they have no spirituality. And to natives, prayer is the strongest weapon against demoralization. Many of them go because it's easy money and they have a curiosity for the exotic. The psychologists come from academia, not speaking their language literally, culturally, or spiritually. Open quotes. The community should decide who comes in and who doesn't, not some government issue program. Close quotes. Hope comes through prayer, which is why spirituality is a driving force of the indigenous resistance movement. To be able to call yourself indigenous and practice rituals is in itself a victory. It's important to preserve and vocalize indigenous identity, especially after being harshly prevented from doing so in the past. Open quotes. If we said we were native, we died. Close quotes. From the female cacique, chief of the Abaite tribe. 
During the dictatorship in the 60s, there were concentration camps for natives. Today, calling oneself indigenous can still be a death sentence. So in many ways, this fight is simply for the right to exist. The legacy of indigenous women. When Brazil was invaded, not discovered, there were virtually no European women. So the vast majority of the Brazilian population has come to be from the violent miscegenation between white men and women of color. The fact that our ancestors were violated is something that affects us today and is a trauma that is passed down to us. There is no recorded history of these indigenous women. For hundreds of years, they have had no voice. All we hear and reproduce is the memory of the white European men who violated them. So we had no chance to heal. Not allowing indigenous people to speak for themselves has been a successful and despicable way to instill in society the white supremacist ideology we are still struggling with today. For instance, only last year, the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam hosted an exhibition of works by a Dutch colonial artist called Franz Post. He continued to paint Brazilian landscapes well after his visit to Brazil in the mid-1600s because they sold very well, while, open quotes, not a single animal or plant study from his hand is known. Close quotes. In other words, he was painting fantasy. And he isn't the only Dutch artist in museums today who did that. Open quotes. Eckhart's depictions were presented at the time as curiosities, but would end up influencing, not to a small degree, the ethnological gaze and anthropological perspectives toward Brazil's indigenous peoples up to the present day. Close quotes. Adoni Agnolini. To the left, we have an indigenous woman with chopped body parts in a bag and dangerous wild animals, intending to represent the savagery of indigenous peoples in Dutch-occupied Brazil. This is not how natives practice anthropophagy. To the right, we have a domesticated mestizo man with European-style clothes and firearm. The twisted white European gaze, while still widely considered objective, has for hundreds of years misrepresented the culture and traditions of native peoples while violently silencing the people they supposedly represent. These are examples of capitalism sprouting from patriarchal colonialism and forming the symbiosis of white supremacy, sexism, and the free market that we live in today. The way to keep the legacy of native ancestors alive is to rescue the memory of the mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and great-great-grandmothers listening, learning, practicing, and sharing keep the identity alive. Indigenous identity is preserved through practice and tradition, not through DNA. Government authorities, however, often use DNA as a tactic to discredit indigenous leaders, undermine their movements, turn native people against each other, and bend the law in their favor. Flavia Guarani Kaioa, for instance, has had her mixed black ancestry used as a threat against her by several authority figures. That doesn't even come close to interfering with her commitment to the movement of indigenous resistance and to her upbringing, ancestors, and traditions. If anything were to happen to her, the whole world will speak her name and her voice will not be silenced like those of the women who came before her. Open quotes. My grandmother used to tell me, this land is not ours. We were forced to choose between coming here and dying. Close quotes. Indigenous women were taken by force from their land and moved into camps where they were put to work as maids in the homes of military officers and Christian leaders until they were 30 or so. When they aged and were no longer considered valuable as cheap labor, they were left without homes or jobs and faced discrimination even in their own tribes when they went back. When Brazilians marginalize indigenous women, it also means marginalizing a significant part of themselves. Brazilian families tend to not value indigenous ancestry there is so much colorism that it makes it hard to look at our roots and to preserve our identity. I personally decided to rescue the memory of my ancestor by ritualizing my life. This doesn't mean I'm going to move in with a tribe and start painting myself. It means I practice daily rituals that connect me with my ancestor. By listening, learning and healing in ways that are just not possible through Western medicine and therapies. We can all benefit from decolonizing ourselves and destroying a little bit of the white supremacy in the world. Mm -hmm.